you've joined us for the Retirement Education Hour. Hi, everyone. Megan Mozak, alongside financial instructors Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. Kirk and Paul, they're both instructors, financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. And we'll be telling you about the foundation's courses. These are deep dives, almost master's level courses. We'll be telling you all about those, how you can attend the different colleges and local universities where those courses are held and how you can get a front row seat. We have a great program lined up for you today. We want you to avoid some of the biggest retirement mistakes that we see people making here in the 21st century when they're planning for a modern retirement. Kirk and Paul are going to identify those for you on the show today and help you avoid them, get out in front of them so that you can have your dream retirement. Kirk and Paul, I want to dive in here. I do want to give the website and the phone number if you want more information on the Retirement Education Foundation. It is Retirement Planning edu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. The phone number 800-240-8981. And I should mention, you can find this episode and many others wherever you find your favorite podcast. Just search for Retirement Education Hour. All right, Kirk and Paul, big mistakes. We make them, right? And everyone makes mistakes. But when it comes to your retirement, there are no do-overs, are there? Uh, there aren't. And, you know, the number one mistake is uh, underestimating the income you're going to need in retirement or underestimating the amount of income that you can generate from what you've saved in retirement. So it's almost two sides of a coin here, depending on sort of where you fall. Now, given our radio show and the goal of the radio show, and as a reminder, the radio show is is uh, brought to you by uh, Retirement Education Foundation, which is a national charity. We uh, promote and provide advanced retirement education for those people within 10 years of retirement through retirement. Charity does a number of other things as well, but for the purpose of this radio show, th that's the goal, right? And so today we really want to focus on that, you know, almost $1 to $10 million retiree or someone who's going to have between one and ten million dollars saved once they approach retirement or get in retirement and making a mistake about income like missing your target for income can be catastrophic right i know the number one fear for most retirees is outliving their money and so if we underestimate what we're going to need in retirement then it, it, and I'll give you an example. If 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 you're someone who's going to retire and your estimated targeted income is, let's say, $150,000 a year in retirement, missing by $15,000, meaning I didn't need $150,000, I really needed $165,000, means you need almost $600,000 more saved at the point of retirement. So I want to make sure we cover that, Paul. The other side of that coin is people way under underliving what they otherwise could be spending. People not understanding that you can generate greater than 3, 4, 5% withdrawal rates. You can actually create income closer to 6, 7, 8, 9% withdrawal rates if you know the right levers to pull at the right times, Paul. Yeah, it's interesting. It, depending on who we're talking to, you know, the, it, it sort of dictates what the problem is. There are a lot of people, as you say, who underestimate how much they need, and as you said, a ten or fifteen thousand dollar difference over your lifetime is huge. But many of the people that are listening to the show have the opposite problem. The problem is they underspend, right? And part of it goes back to what you said, which is there's so much noise about people, you know, running out of money sometime in retirement, and that's true for a segment of the population. But most of the people listening to our show. Most people listening today, they, they, their problem really is they, they're so afraid of spending that they underspend and never really do the things they want to do in retirement. So part of the goal today is to help those folks as well. Right, Paul. So I think in our next segment, maybe we tackle the statistics, which will shock people of how much money people really have when they die and how little they actually sure. spend because of fear and anxiety. To help with that fear and anxiety, it starts with and one of the reasons we have these eight-hour courses that we're teaching at major universities in both Michigan and Missouri. So to attend one of these eight-hour courses, all you need to do is go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Yeah, you know, brother, what's, what's fascinating about this topic is, is there are so many mistakes that people make, and the problem is they don't 
they don't know they're making the mistakes until they make them. And and one of the things that I think we need to make sure people understand is, is if you can avoid making these mistakes before they happen, then you're going to be in a much better shape. If you don't and you make these mistakes that we're going to talk about today and you make them after you retire, after you stop getting a paycheck, it becomes, not that you can't fix them, it becomes much more problematic. So the more you can prepare, anticipate, and do things before you get to that point, the better off you're going to be. And I think a lot of the mistakes we talk about today, I think are going to help people to live a better life in retirement. Well, Paul, I, I, you know, two things. One is I want to respond to that because I, 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 that's what this the show is about. That's what the class is about, helping people prepare and understand that there's a little different approach to retirement for that one to ten million dollar uh, retiree than the average baby boomer or the average information they're consuming. But before I, I talk about that, that I I, I want to mention you said brother, and I, you've not done that very very often on a radio show, which I really enjoyed that you said brother. Well, you, you, you are my brother. I, well, I know, but I don't think the listeners recognize that you and I are brothers because we have different last names and we probably don't look, we, well, we don't look We, we don't, similar. we don't. <laughs> but, but Paul is my brother, different father, same mother, raised in the same household. So when we, <laughs> if we slip out and up and say brother, that's what we're talking about. And, and really Paul helped with his, his background in psychology and that's what he did for a large portion of his life. He was a clinical director of mental health and specialized in uh, elderly, uh, the psychology around geriatric and elder, the elderly. That's one of the reasons we started this class, because you guys are way underspending. Most of you are going to underspend what you otherwise could spend. You're re- working longer than you should, and you're going to pay more taxes than you should because no one is talking to you about advanced retirement strategies. Your advisors out there, they are accumulation advisors focused on the growth of your money. The less you spend of your money in retirement, the more your advisors make. I know no one's told you that before, but that's part of the reason why the class is eight hours in length, to help you construct your own individualized, customized retirement plan for that Call it $750,000 to $10 million retiree. So to register for an eight-hour course that's held at just about all the major universities and colleges in your area, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And there's much more with Kurt and Paul straight ahead. Stay with us right here on the Retirement Education Hour. The show continues here on the Retirement Education Hour, and we're glad you're along for the ride. Megan Mozak here with financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They are with the Retirement Education Foundation. You heard Kirk and Paul earlier talking about the courses. These courses are sponsored by the foundation, and they're taught at local major colleges and universities. So wherever you're listening today, that might be Michigan, that might be Missouri, we've got locations for you. In Michigan, you can look for these courses at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both campuses, Troy and Novi, or Oakland University. And if you're in the great state of Missouri, go to the website for the locations for you. Those colleges and universities are marked there at Retirement Planning edu.org. Here's that web address again. It's retirement planning, edu.org. You can register there. You can also call to get registered, 800-240-8981. Again, 800-240-8981. Today on the show, we're helping you avoid some of the very biggest retirement mistakes And before we get back to that, I want to remind you, you can re-listen to this show or listen to any number of episodes in our library, wherever you find your podcast, simply search for Retirement Education Hour. Okay, back to the topic at hand, Kirk and Paul. There is a big mistake out there I want you to talk about. This one catches me by surprise, though. You say underspending is a mistake, and I thought it would be reverse. I thought you were going to talk to us about overspending. Help us understand this. Well, I think the financial service industry as a whole, would really like people be, to be afraid of outliving their money. And it's not an accident they, they've come out, that they, they've, they've conditioned you to believe, and you are all convinced, I need to protect my principal. And when we have short-term market events, I have to back down my spending. 
And the, it, it, it's not an accident. Now, here's, here's what we know because we've been doing these radio shows. I don't know. We're probably going on eight, ten years now. We've been teaching classes at major universities for, I think it's been 12 years. The charity was founded about 12 years ago. We know who attends the classes and we know who's listening to our radio show. And the majority of you have between one and $10 million saved now or once you hit retirement. And we know that segment is way underspending what they otherwise could be spending. And it's not just our data after teaching tens of thousands of people around the country. It's the government's data that's telling us that, which I, I, I'm going to refer to Paul here in a minute. He's going to give you the data. But I am telling you all, you can spend a lot more than 3 or 4% withdrawal rates. The online calculators that your 401Ks and the Schwabs and the Fidelities and all the different firms out there that provide you these online retirement calculators, they're all using withdrawal rates of 3 to 4%. Now, I promise you, go to our website. You can look at what a sample plan webinar looks like. It's like 30 minutes. We walk through an example of taking 8% withdrawal rates and with a zero chance of outliving your income at 65 years old, starting at 65 years old. So you can have withdrawal rates of five, six, seven, eight, nine percent. It requires advanced planning that is specific to you with a number of different levers. But the data tells us, Paul, that most people don't find this help. They don't find this information, and no one is really building them a customized plan, which we'll talk about why they're not teaching you this later. But Paul, what is the data? What it's incredible. Yeah, the information you found. Yeah, it is. And, and if I can just say, I think the data reflects. And I'll share it in a second. The data reflects two really important points. One is it really shows how much fear there is out there in spending money. I think it also shows how little our industry does in helping educate and helping people spend their money. Here's the data. Across all wealth levels, the majority of the listeners that are listening to this show right now will have 80%, 80% of their pre-retirement savings two decades into the retirement. 80% 80% of, their, of the money they had going into retirement, they will still have two decades later, meaning basically they're not spending. One third of their assets will actually grow in retirement. And this is not because they want it. This is because one, they're afraid of spending, and two, no one has helped them understand that they can actually spend their money and actually never run out of their money. And, and it reflects both issues. Paul, so you said, I'm going to recap. of the people, essentially about when they die, I'm sorry, the majority of the people, when they die, still have 80% of what they had before they retired. Yes. And I think you said a third actually will see their assets grow. That's right. And and if I could say, it's not because legacy was important. Let me be clear. They didn't do this purposely because they wanted it. They did because no, it was fear and no one showed them how to basically spend down their assets and never run out. And Paul, I want people to, uh, I want, we know who's listening, right? We know the people coming to our courses. These are CFOs. They are CPAs. They're engineers. They're highly educated. They're executives, many of them with MBA. These are people who are sophisticated, bright, and understand money. So none of them think that this, this will be them, right? Some of them will hide behind, no, legacy is important to me. When it's really not, they're really just afraid and fearful of outliving their money and they don't know how to do a contra- a controlled spend down of their principal. There's a portion of them will think they can do it and they think they're going to be able to manage their emotions because they've been able to do it their whole lives. They've never panicked. They've not overreacted to market events in the past. But what they don't understand is their relationship with money is going to change. There is a behavioral component to this. That's the reason why, Paul, you joined our firm what is it, 12, 14 years ago, to help people to navigate this because no longer does someone else pay you a paycheck to pay your bills. You have to do it yourself. And you have to do it yourself as you are aging and you have, you're having cognitive decline. And if you think you're going to be a super smart person that's highly educated, talented, and has been dealing with money their whole lives, is going to be able to navigate that as they age, and keep emotion out of it and still spend and not 
change their spending patterns every time there's a short-term market event or an election they don't like, you're fooling yourselves. And that's why we teach these eight-hour, almost master's-level courses at most of the major universities in your areas, right? And so these courses are taught over two evenings or one full Saturday. It's a 200-page textbook, and all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity to attend. If you'd like to register, you can go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or you can stream this virtually while we're teaching it live in the class so you can do it in the comfort of your own home. We hope to see you there. And we'll be back. Plenty more with Kirk and Paul coming up right here on the Retirement Education Hour. Here with Kirk and Paul. That's right. This is the Retirement Education Hour, and we're glad you're with us. They are back here in the studio with us with a great message on big mistakes, mistakes you want to avoid when you're planning for retirement. Hi, everyone. Megan Mozak here again, Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. I want to send you to the foundation's website as you're listening. Be sure to check out Retirement Planning, edu. Dot org. When you're there, you're going to find locations and details around these courses we've been telling you about that really, they're like master's level courses, deep dives into retirement planning that you need to take. You need this foundation to be able to have the type of retirement you envision for yourself. Gone are the days where you just kind of set it and forget it and it's automatic, takes a lot of careful planning, and we want you to have those tips and strategies and you can get that at these courses So reserve your spot. They do fill up quickly. And no matter where you're listening today, if it's Michigan, Missouri, major colleges and universities in your area, host these courses. And again, you can find out more at retirementplanningedu.org. Here's where they're taught in Michigan at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi and Troy campuses. Oakland University. And if you're listening from Missouri today, hello to you. Check out that website for a full list of colleges and universities. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. The phone number you can also use to register, 800-240-8981. That's 800-240-8981. Eight, one. And don't forget, you can find this episode and many, many others. You can listen again or share with a friend. Simply find it wherever you find your podcasts. Search for Retirement Education Hour. Kirk and Paul, you say that there are some simple rules of thumb, things we've heard for years that actually can cause some missteps, some mistakes. Tell us more about that. Okay. So anyone that's been listening to us for some time now, hear us talk about these regularly. Right. I'm just going to name a few. There's something called the 4% rule. Essentially, every calculator you guys are using online today, whether you go to Morningstar, Vanguard, Schwab, wherever you're using online calculators, they're using, it's built based upon an old rule that was founded in 1994 by a gentleman by the name of William Bangin, right? It was called the 4% rule. Basically, you're going to put 60% of your money in stocks, 40% of your money in bonds. And if you're 65 years old, you should withdraw 4%. And historically speaking, you'd only have about a 10% chance of outliving your money. Well, the retirement and investment and interest rate landscape has changed significantly since 1994. So when we use the 4% rule today, you outlive your money almost 30% of the time when we back test it. So now they're all pivoting, depending on who you listen to, to somewhere between 2.8% withdrawal rates and 3.7%. That is silliness, okay? The other rule that is total silliness that you guys need to avoid is the rule around when you pull money out of IRAs versus 401ks versus your taxable accounts versus your Roth accounts. It's all wrong. And I know it's all over the place. You're going to read all these articles that are all telling you the same thing. And we're telling you those rules were designed for the average baby boomer. And let me wake you all up. You're not average baby boomers. The average person is going to retire with about two two $250,000 saved. That's all they have saved. They have to follow those kinds of rules if that's all they have saved. In fact, 40% of baby boomers 
just about everything they have is just going to come from Social Security. So if you're someone with 700, a million, three, five, that one to $10 million family, these rules do not apply. And as a result, you're going to way underspend what you should spend, which you can spend. You're going to pay way more taxes than you should because you're withdrawing at the wrong times from the wrong accounts. And you're going to focus on all the wrong things and you're going to work longer than you need to. Paul. It was a lot in a quick second, but these simple rules were designed for the financial service industry just to be more profitable, to make things cookie cutter, and the less you spend, the more they make. So why teach you to spend more, Paul? Why teach people to spend more? Right. It it actually is what differentiates our class, to be honest with you, right? I I, 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 I know you've seen this, you've experienced this. For some, you know, simple cells, right? Simple sells because we we work in a transactional industry right the average advisor it's about transacting business and if you do something simple it sells and also to be honest with you for the listener simple doesn't overwhelm people right so people part of the problem we have part of the problem in the class is that listen retirement planning is complex there are a lot of levers if you really want to do this right it's complex But sometimes complex can overwhelm people. And if your goal is to sell, you want to be simple. It's not the best. We know that. But that's the reason why our our, our industry pushes it. And, And again, it's what differentiates our class. So when people come to our class, they, you know, they learn all the levers that you have to pull. But all those levers are complicated. Right. They're complicated. Paul, I love that you said two things that the more simple it is, the easier it is to sell. So that's why they come up with general rules. But I think more importantly, as you said, retirement planning is complicated. Now, it doesn't have to be complicated. It can be simple, but you can't, you're going to have to work longer. You're going to have to spend a lot less and you're going to pay a lot more taxes. If you want more income, retire earlier, pay less taxes, and you have the resources like many of you do that 700,000 to 10 million dollars 20 million dollars you have the resources to use more complex advanced strategies and and folks i want to make sure you hear me and we'll, maybe we'll tease this for next segment it's not about the investment strategies i know that the financial service industry tries to distract you look over here look over here it's all about i can invest better than that person it's not what you invest in that's going to drive your success in retirement And I know that is very, very difficult for many of our listeners to listen to. I know that CPA, that attorney, the CFO, the exec, I know you guys think it's the investments. And oh, by the way, it has been the the investments up until this point to get you what you have. But to now spend these dollars most effectively to be able to take the most amount of money out to pay the least amount of taxes and retire sooner. Your focus has to shift a little. It's not, the complexity isn't what you invest or building the portfolio. The complexity is in the income, tax planning, estate planning. How do I leave my surviving spouse? What money do I take from which accounts at what age? What strategies to, what pivot accounts do I have during times of volatility? That's why it's eight hours. The class is eight hours. That's why it's taught in university settings. That's why it's 200 page textbook. We do allow you to stream this live from your own home. I'm telling you, it's much more valuable in person. If you'd like to register for one of these classes, all you have to do is make a donation to charity. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we're back. There's more Retirement Education Hour coming up. We're glad you're tuned in to the Retirement Education Hour. Hi, everyone. Megan Mozak here with Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler, both financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. And we want you to get registered right now. We want you to reserve your seat for the foundation's courses. These are retirement planning courses that really take a deep look into how to plan for a successful modern retirement. They're held at major colleges and universities, and these are almost like a master's level course course in retirement planning, which is so needed in today's environment. And we want to see you there. So no matter where you're listening to us today, and and welcome, by the way, we're glad you're with us. 
If it's Michigan, if it's Missouri, we have many locations for you in Michigan. These are taught at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi and Troy campuses, or Oakland University. And in Missouri, you're welcome to visit the website to get a full list of all of the colleges and universities there that offer these courses. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirement planning edu. Dot org or call 800-240-8981. You can also choose to stream these courses. They are streamed live and you can watch that way from the comfort of your own home. So reach out today and reserve your spot. And keep in mind this very episode and many, many others are available wherever you find your podcasts. Simply search for Retirement Education Hour. All right, let's go back to this list that you've been sharing with us, Kirk and Paul, and it's a compelling one. You're pointing out some of the biggest mistakes people make when they're planning for retirement, and I'm writing these down. I want to avoid them. And this next one is a big one, you say, because people have their focus in the wrong spot. They're very focused on their investments, but what aren't they focused on, Kirk? Well, this is where... (laughs) This is where we get some pushback early. So if you attend the eight-hour class, let me rephrase. When you attend, because you're foolish to not attend, you're you're going to spend less, pay more taxes, work longer, leave your family and your surviving sp- I'm telling you, you need to attend this class. But early on, we challenge people by challenging the belief that what will drive your success in retirement, you all believe... Because what has driven your success to this point, what has gotten you here was two things. It was just two levers. It was your savings that you saved and you were disciplined savers and that you invested and you believe you've invested well, even though we'll prove to you in the class that you didn't invest very well. You really way underperformed the S&P 500. You should have just bought the S&P 500 many years ago. But setting that aside. You all believe what is going, what's driven your success to this point is what will drive your success and what should be your focus in retirement. And you're totally missing it. The financial industry has convinced you this. And the message they're going to tell you is, listen, I manage money and I can navigate volatility and I can manage standard deviation and I have a process and I have a algorithm or I have a momentum strategy. I have this strategy, that strategy, this strategy, and your head's spinning and whoever is the most compelling salesperson you choose and all of it's irrelevant. It's, it's not hard. The easiest part of what we do in our private practice, and we have a private practice that is responsible for over $2 billion. We've been doing this a long time. What drives, that's the easiest part. The easiest part is investing. What drives success is navigating your income and making sure no matter what the economic condition we confront will be over the next 30 years, that we have the right accounts to pivot to during those stressful times. Not change my investment strategies, not try to market time or stock pick. Nobody's good enough. Look, if you want to focus on growth and investments, that's fine. You're going to have to use conventional wisdom and only live on your 3 or 4% withdrawal rates. But if you want to withdraw 7, 8, 9% withdrawal rates at 65 years old on your $2 million, if you want $160,000 a year, it can't just be your focus is on growth and investments. You have to have some growth-oriented investments. You have to have some laddered bonds, laddered treasuries. You have to have different types of accounts and where you pull your income from has to pivot when we have the market volatility. Because Paul, how many times through a 30 year retirement are people going to be faced with a major market event or recession? How many times? Multiple, three, four, five over the retirement, three, four, five times. And, and, so, and- Go ahead. So go no, ahead. I know. No, no but I, but I, if I can just add one thing to this, because I, I, when I I'm, I'm listening to Kirk and, and I think it's it's a difficult thing for our listeners to I think absorb. And I mean I think there's this natural tendency to want to push back because all their life, all of all of our lives, we've been conditioned, right? We all have been conditioned to believe, and we've been conditioned by our environment to believe. That at the end of the day, it's about our investments, right? We've been conditioned by the financial service industry. All of us have been. Well, right? it has been to get to retirement. It has. That's been. right. It, it, but they continue to promote it even in retirement. 
And, and, and the reason being is because it's, it's their value proposition, right? If you're not going to do real planning, if you're not going to spend time doing real planning, the only value proposition you have is this investment lever. And sadly, that's most of our financial industry, right? That's, so it. I think that we, we've been conditioned to believe that, and that's part of the problem. Paul, I'm going to encourage everyone listening to this segment right now that doesn't want to trust or believe us. Just please go to the website and watch. Uh, we've produced a 30-minute webinar on a sample retirement plan. And what you're going to see is a 65-year-old married couple with $2 million saved for retirement. And you're going to see they're going to get $160,000 a year, increasing for inflation every single year with zero chance of outliving their income. Zero chance of outliving, zero, zero, zero chance. That means I'm, we're producing an 8% withdrawal rate. And we walk you through what it looks like and how we get there. That's what the class is about. That's what we teach. And the thing that I want you guys to all focus on is that the average projected growth rate over that 30-year retirement plan was three and a half percent. That was the growth rate, the average growth rate. It's not the growth rate. <laughs> it's pulling income from the right count, the right accounts during different market events that's going to drive your performance. You don't need 10% returns to have six, seven, eight percent. You can have a controlled spend down of your principal if you make sure there's no chance of outliving your income. You just need to understand there's a much more advanced way to do this that the really ultra wealthy with their family offices have had, had access to, but you one to $10 million people haven't had access to. And that's what the eight hour class is about. Register. They're taught at all the major universities at most of the major universities in your area. We're streaming them live from the universities. If you don't want to attend in person, all you got to do is make a $29 donation to charity. Register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll be back with Kirk and Paul right after this. Back with Kirk and Paul. This is the Retirement Education Hour. Hi, everyone. We're glad you're with us today. Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler, they're financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. And we want to see you at the foundation's courses. Again, these are like master's level courses into retirement planning. This is the foundation you need for that successful in retirement. The one you've worked so hard for. We wanna see you enjoy it and it starts with a plan. So you can reserve your front row seat at the website. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or you can call 800 240 8981. That's 800-240-8981. They're held at major colleges and universities. If you're listening in Michigan or Missouri, we've got locations for you in Michigan. These are taught at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi and Troy campuses, or Oakland University. And if you're in Missouri today, go online to check out the colleges and universities in your area that host these courses. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. And remember, you can listen to this episode. You can share it with a friend and listen to many more in our library wherever you find your podcasts. Simply search for Retirement Education Hour. We've been reviewing with Kirk and Paul today some of the very biggest mistakes people make when they're planning for retirement. And we want you to avoid these. And one of them is this is just a big one. You see it a lot. And this is the tendency to do it yourself, the DIYers. Well, yeah, especially the demos that the, the people that tend to listen to our radio show and those who are attending our classes, we get a tremendous amount of people that are highly educated, who have done financially very well for themselves, who got here by doing it themselves, right? It, for a lot of reasons, they have been more comfortable doing it themselves, often around fees, often around trust. More often than not, it's a control issue. We get it. I, I, I'm that person. I get it. That one to ten million dollar family tends to often be do-it-yourselfers, and we need to shake you a little bit to under. And, and and we appreciate why you've done it yourself. And frankly, to this point, you didn't need anybody else. Frankly, all you should have done is bought the S and P five hundred and not looked at your statement or tried to stock pick or market time because. You, you lost to the S&P 500, but 
as you approach retirement and you enter into retirement, there's some critical questions that you do not have the ability to do. This is the first time in your life you will ever plan for so many moving parts. So there's a couple of critical things that you need to realize. One is you are aging. So cognitively, things will begin to decline. There's a reason once you turn 65 years old, you're not allowed to fly a plane anymore. There's a reason why in certain jobs, once you reach a certain age, you're no longer able to do or allowed to do those jobs. And frankly, it probably should be across our government too, but we're not getting into that debate about age today. As you age, your cognitive ability around mathematics quickly diminish. That's reason one. Reason two, this is the first time you will ever plan for retirement. There is no do-overs. There's no, I'm still working. I'm still saving money. If I make a mistake, I could still stay working and I still have time. You don't have time. You are done. So first time you've ever done, it's like going to a surgeon that's never done the brain surgery and saying, yeah, I choose you over the person that's done it 10,000 times. This is the first time you're ever going to do this. Three, you are paying more fees than you need to because if you own mutual funds, actively manage mutual funds, you're already making mistakes. You're paying fees you shouldn't. And if you get the right person and team to help you, they should save you more in taxes than the fees cost to begin with. Four, probably the most important, and I might have lost track with my numbers, Paul, probably the most important that I'm going to let you talk about is the impact this has on your on the surviving spouse and we don't know when you're going to die and it's usually the men who are do-it-yourselfers you're really leaving your spouse in a very vulnerable position paul yeah this is you know all of the all of the mistakes that we're talking about today they're all problematic they all they're all issues for some reason this one bothers me the most and i think the the part that bothers me the most is this is this cognitive what i what i would consider a cognitive distortion that people think, and, and it's, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but people think because you are great in one aspect of your life means you're great at everything, right? At the end of the day, if you're married, this you're, I'm sorry to say it's selfish to do this, right? Yeah, if you're if you're if you're if you're single and you you don't you're not worried about having the best retirement, okay, I guess you can make that decision. But if you're married, you have an obligation to make sure especially for men, sorry, that when you pass, your spouse is in, in, in good shape. Your spouse is going to be okay. And for you to do it yourself, knowing that when you pass away, your spouse is going to be in, in, already in, in, in difficult position, already vulnerable to fraud, vulnerable emotionally, to put that spouse in a position where now they have to pick up your pieces is, is, is selfish. And Paul, I'm sorry to say that, but it just is. Paul, this is a great example of this. Obviously, this is the first time they're ever doing it because if they had done it before and they recognized the mistakes, errors, and what they are doing to their family and their spouse, they wouldn't do this. They wouldn't do it because not. we know 36% of baby boomers are going to be victims to financial elder abuse. And who is targeted, Paul? It's the surviving spouse of a do-it-yourselfer. We know that 80% of women will die single. That does not apply to men. That is not close to the number for men. And we know two-thirds of financial elder abuse is perpetrated to women. And it's not because they're less sophisticated or less smart or they don't understand it. Well, you, you do-it-yourselfers have left them in a very vulnerable position. Thinking, and we know what you're thinking, that your family, your children... We'll take care of them. Well, guess what? 60% of all financial elder abuse is from family. Family. Because in your children's marriage, who's responsible for the finances? Is it your child <laughs> or your son-in-law or daughter-in-law? Because that's who's calling the shots for mom or dad when the first one died. Look, trying to do this yourself is so crazy. The problem is you don't know who to trust and what to look for. That is the whole purpose of this class is to teach you all the levers of what a, com a, a, a comprehensive retirement plan looks like, what it should have, how it should feel, look, what things it should be in it, and then how do you choose an advisor? That's a whole segment in section in the, the classes. How do you do background checks? How do you know how they pay get paid? What specific questions should I ask? What does a plan look like? What should it have? We teach all of that in eight hours, 200-page textbook. I would highly encourage you to register. 
They're taught at most of the major universities and colleges in your area, and we stream it live. All you have to do is go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll return much more right here on the Retirement Education Hour. So glad you've tuned in to the Retirement Education Hour. Hi, everyone. Megan Mozak here alongside financial instructors Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. Kirk and Paul are with the Retirement Education Foundation. They're both financial instructors. You can meet them and other financial instructors with the foundation when you attend these courses that we've been telling you about, retirement planning courses that really go to the next level. Nothing in these courses is surface level. These are like master's level courses into retirement planning. They're held at major colleges and universities in your community, whether you're listening in Michigan or Missouri today. We have locations for you in Michigan. These are held at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi and Troy campuses, or Oakland University. In Missouri, you can go to the website. It's retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Find the full list of colleges and universities that hold these very courses. We want you to sign up today. You can also call to register and reserve your seat at 800-240-8981. That's 800-240-8981. This show and many others, their full library for you, available wherever you find your favorite podcasts. You can search for Retirement Education Hour to access those. It's been a great show today as we've uncovered some of the biggest retirement planning mistakes. We're helping you get out in front of those, identify them, avoid them. And really, the antidote to all of this is something I hear you guys say regularly, and that is you got to have a plan. But what does that mean? So any of our regular listeners know what the segment's going to be about. The answer to your questions to avoid these retirement mistakes is all around and based on advanced, almost master's level education and having a comprehensive retirement plan. So we try to, in almost every one of our shows, the last segment, lay out what does a comprehensive retirement plan include? What is it and what isn't it? Because I, we believe, we know, we've, remember, we, we've been doing this all, teaching these classes for a long, long, tens of thousands of people we've taught. We know many of you believe you have a plan. And <laughs> Paul, I bet it's less than 1% of the people who attend the classes that listen to our radio shows actually have a comprehensive retirement plan to maximize their income, minimize their taxes, protect their surviving spouses, get them retired soon enough because they don't really know what a retirement plan is. Now, Paul, a retirement plan, and I'm going to let you take some of this, a retirement plan is going to include mapping out 30 years of your income coming from different accounts that you set up today that you will pivot to different accounts for that income depending on different market conditions. When the market's up, you're going to pull from these counts. When the market is down or we have a recession or major market event, we're going to pull from these accounts. So it's going to map out where we're going to be taking our income from for 30 years with pivot accounts, with an an account that I can pivot to every time we have a major market event so I can reduce my spending out of my normal accounts. Now, it also is going to include mapping out and, and this is working backwards. We're going to teach you in the class how to project what effective, a marginal and effective tax rate you're going to be in in your 70s when you're forced to take your required minimum distributions, when you're forced to be taking your Social Security. If you have your pension, you're taking your pension, we're going to help you project exactly what that taxes will look like in your 70s and 80s so that you can work backwards and then start running all the iterations to find the most efficient way to take income from your different types of accounts whether it's your IRAs and 401ks, whether it's your taxable accounts, whether it's your Roth accounts, whether it's when you should be starting your Social Security. The online Social Security calculators are useless. You have to know the tax problem around Social Security to determine when you should be taking your taxes. So this maps everything out, including, Paul, what happens when a a spouse passes, right? Exactly, exactly. And that's obviously extremely important because we know one of you is going to die first. How do we make sure that surviving spouse 
who will get less money because once Social Security will be gone, but actually pay higher taxes because our tax rates go up when we're single, right? How do we make sure they're in the position they can continue living the lifestyle they're used to living? We have to plan for that as well. Kirk, can I say one more thing? You know, we often make this statement about mass, this this is like, this is high end. You know, Kirk, I've attended many courses in my life, right? I have, (laughs) I've taken many classes and I can tell you because I've, I've attended, this is high level. We get into the weeds. Not just, we don't just touch base. We actually show people how to do these strategies, whether it's tax planning, whether it's income planning. A- another area that we help people, you know, there's a huge risk as we age that you're going to have a health problem and you're going to need help. And it's very expensive, right? And we're not big believers in long-term care insurance. We really get into the weeds helping people plan for long-term care expenses, a huge risk that people have to understand. Yeah, massive. 70% of people are going to require some sorts of long-term care. So but is, is the, 70%? But 70%. But the math, the math problem, the way to solve this problem isn't just I go buy something that if I don't use it, I lose it. I don't, we don't believe in that, especially for that $1 to $10 million family. There, families, there's other ways to approach those kinds of challenges to be prepared for it. But don't handcuff you so you're afraid to spend any money when you are healthy and Good. active in your 60s and 70s, which we see consistently people coming into these classes when they already have what they need to give them what they want in retirement, but they're still working, they're still afraid, they're unwilling to spend because they don't understand all the levers and how a plan should be constructed. So they're just afraid. So attend one of our eight-hour courses. They're taught in two evenings or one full Saturday. They taught at most of the universities in your areas and colleges in your areas. You can even stream it if you have a conflict or you're uncomfortable going back into a university setting. Stream it while we're teaching live from the university. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Retirement Education Foundation is a fiscally sponsored program of United Charitable, a registered 501c3 public charity. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This radio show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual's situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is paid for by the Retirement Education Foundation.